Now I wait in bushes down by the rail. Name this song. I was thinking last night that I don't want to get into a Zoe Quinn situation with Mags. What if I'm the last jerk off to make fun of Mags' horrible comic books? And she goes on Twitter and mentions that douchebag Bianca on YouTube making fun of her. Then the next day, Mags' partner finds Mags, how shall I say, hanging out in the closet, if you know what I mean. That 41% statistic does not play. I mean, if that did happen, me and a lot of other YouTubers would be rapidly d deleting all our old Kim and Kim videos and staying off Twitter for a few days. But really, if Zoe Quinn can get away with murder in such a public manner, then that gives the rest of us permission to do the same. Not that I'm saying that that is what I want to have happen. I definitely do not. I hope Mags is part of the 59% that survives. And now that I think about it, those are horrible, horrible odds. And it seems like nobody wants to talk about it because it's transphobic. I wonder if there is a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy here. If you know that your odds of offing yourself are 2 in 5, that would probably depress you enough to make you make a bad decision. I can only hope that Mags is only a trans trender and only pretending, so Mags can get jobs writing comics, because nobody was hiring Brian Visaggio when he was just a chubby Italian guy, but as soon as he puts on a wig and some lipstick, he became, or she became, stunning and brave. Just like Bruce Jenner. Because comic companies get diversity points for Mags, but none for Brian. Anyway, I just got back from a trip from a much warmer climate. Um, and while I was there, I did get a chance to read some uh, some comic books. And I read this one, Dr. Mirage number 5. And it had some things I thought were done well. But good stories among a bunch of trash, it's like, um, it's like with YouTube channels... The best channels, I mean best as in the most uh, successful ones, if your goal is getting, you know, doing this for a, a second job or something, they're pretty narrowly focused. You can't have a pop culture channel suddenly cover sports. So the same with mags. Mags writes stories that aren't designed to actually be read. People buy them to support mags in the LGBTQ plus thing, which is funny because right now there's a, I guess there's kind of a turf war uh, between the LGBs and the T's and the lesbians on one side and the transgender men on the other side or the transgender women on the other side, like using locker rooms and sports and getting scholarships. and It's a, it's a sticky situation. I hope things don't get too hair. Oh, whatever. Anyway, the... Uh, they're just supporting mags and they're not actually reading these comics because you'd have to read one for yourself to understand it. I mean, I could I could read like the, a couple of pages out of a comic and you you'd immediately look around and go, this isn't a comic book. This is just somebody's psychosis on display. Somebody has daddy issues in every single freaking issue. So, I mean, the point is they're just trying to support mags, which is all well and good. But think of all the trees that are getting slaughtered in the meanwhile. Why not just cut the middleman, save the trees, send Mags Visaggio like 25, 25 cents a month. I guess probably the minimum is a dollar. Send her a dollar a month on Patreon or PayPal and just say, okay, you know, this is your profit for the comics I'm not going to buy because they're horrible and they're just a waste of paper and they're just they're filling landfills. Just take my dollar. I get to support you. I get to virtue signal. Feel a little bit better about myself. Hopefully you stay out of your closet and away from that belt. And um, you know what I mean. I would love to talk to the 900 people who are buying the fifth issue of any of Mags' books. Because by issue four or five, that's what they're down to. 900 issues. In places like San Francisco or L.A., a lot of people who are buying Mags' books are mentally ill or high on drugs. People in... <laughs> If you don't know what I mean in reference to that, go to a comic book store in a major city and you might know what I'm talking about. People who are buying Mags' comics probably are just skimming through them so Mags doesn't need to bother with a story. And he, I wrote he, that was the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Please don't send me to room 101. And she, she, she never actually sits down like she does to pee, and writes something that requires effort. Because, it, and you know, um, back when some people were 
your boy was calling him a man in a wig. I never understood that. I thought, well, why wouldn't Mags just grow his hair out? But then, I th- what if you're you're balding? Because Mags is like some 40-year-old dude. And if he's balding, he's wearing lipstick and a dress, he's got long hair with a big bald spot, it would look a bit weird. And I think the drugs he takes, or the hormones he ta- she takes, uh, to turn him into... <laughs> or her cause him to lose his hair or something so where's wig i'm not sure how that all all works um anyway so yeah sitting down and actually writing a coherent story requires effort this has just gone off the fudging rails and this is like at some point all these little political incorrect references i they build up i think should i just restart this this thing yeah, I mean the odds of uh, SDW seeing this and complaining to Mags are probably pretty pretty slim. Um, I don't think an SDW would make it this far. Anyway, so so Mags isn't going to sit down and actually put effort into a story because it works like this: Do you want to write a good fun story or do you want to write propaganda? If you're an NPC, the answer is I want to write propaganda. Sales are of secondhand importance. The only thing that matters is that there's that sweet blue check mark. They want money, but they don't want comics book money. They want Hollywood Netflix money. They want their SJW stories on the small screen. Uh, if Lindelof and The Watchmen, if he can make money with his anti-POL storyline, then anyone can. And uh, I don't know how well Lindelof's Watchmen is doing. I am sure all the SGWs just love it. I imagine lanky people with greasy hair smoking grass and soaking in Lindelof's oh-so-subtle message. Hollywood really hates the people of the light. When I think of SGWs, I think of Antifa kids. They're either too skinny or too fat. They're never in shape or good-looking. It's kind of a, like a requirement to be in Antifa. It's usually these greasy, greasy, chinless guys with their obese girlfriends who come home from their Antifa rallies where they beat up black and Mexican Trump supporters to sit on the couch and watch MSNBC, The Last Jedi, and The Watchmen. Hopefully they get their Soros money so they can buy weed that month. These Antifa kids soak up mainstream left-wing media and they never bother to ask, Hey, who controls the media? Do the controllers of Hollywood and the media have an ulterior motive? Misspelled. Is it possible that they are just manipulating you? Antifa thinks they are so edgy in counterculture. They are the mainstream. The media and Hollywood totally support them because they're also alt-left. They're allowed to march freely through left-wing cities only because the mayors of those liberal cities are also socialists. Max Versazio's com- uh, comic, Dr. Mirage Number 5, I've got to keep looking at the title or I'll forget it. My point is, is that writing one story that has positive elements when your last 20 comics are cancer is a waste of time. The positive elements are, Max is coming from a dark place and... Damn that wrong thing again. I wrote he again. And she kind of edges around the topic of self-harm. Something that is an awesome topic for her because they have a 40% chance of extreme self-harm, if you know what I mean. So in Dr. Mirage, there was a message of hope, of rising up after hard times and getting back to it. Never give up. Don't take the easy way out. And, um... Well, I'll leave it at that. That was actually a cool moment in uh, her comic. I started to feel that Mags was writing from a real place. I'm assuming that Mags has a lot of issues, and judging from her comics and what I have seen of her intention and interactions with Comicsgate people, and to be fair, I'm learning that Comicsgate is not all peace and love. In fact, I'm learning a lot of strange things about Comicsgate, and I almost don't want to know about some of the accus- some of the things I'm hearing. I almost feel like. I'll just rather write these people off than actually investigate the story. It's just too evil. Um, Comiskey was very cool for a short time, and then as Tim Poole says, it's complicated. Tim Beanie fence fence post sitting pool. Um, basically, it went off the rails, and it wasn't even the fault of SJWs. It was all internal. But that is another discussion, and I'm feel, still feeling too good from vacation to talk about Comics Gate just yet. Anyway, this is the comic. Um, if it looks like a try-hard, 
thing where uh, they're just throwing things against the wall, hoping something will stick. You know, a lot of action, a lot of just explosion type of scenes, you know, like made for China. That's what it is. It's just try hard, edgy. Mm, this is a comic. This right here. She puts a crowbar, or it puts a crowbar in its chest because I can't tell what sex it is. Probably a chick. Um, wearing her Mao Zedong suit, or it's I I don't know what they are. If they're both, they're supposed to be guys, and this is just some kind of weird gay fiction thing going on. Um, that's how. This is I. Saw, I can't even repeat it. I saw this thing on Twitter where they were talking about how white liberals and censored feel when they put down um, the people of the light. They feel basically like this. <laughs> just, just uh, have, they have ascended to a higher plane. Um, it's this is stupid. Oh, Doctor Mirage will return. Is that a threat? Because this is the fifth issue, so I'm assuming it's been canceled because of. 900 issue sales. Um, these are these comics they sell in the background. They just, they look like just absolute dog food. There's just this most generic stuff. It's, oh, we have superheroes in spandex. So we have muscular people in spandex with um, freedom devices. And that's the comic, or it's a Japanese ripoff, or, or whatever. The only thing that is is worth reading is Psy Lords because it's a it's a cringe fest with um, three people of color, four people of color. I guess he's Irish, and um, but he's a fat guy. He's got a little bit of a beer belly. I mean, he's a superhero with a, a beer belly, and let's see, breastless chick, breastless chick, and confused about uh, his gender. I have something like 75% men watching and 20% women watching and a few percent gay and then a few percent who are undecided or unsure about that. I don't know. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, guys. Meli Kaliki Maka. Aloha and mahalo.